Hello and welcome to this short act of worship from the Diocese of Blackburn. I'm Bishop Philip and I'm broadcasting from the chapel of my house in Burnley. Today Christians enter into the season of Passion Tide, the second phase of Lent, when we focus our minds more and more on the cross of Jesus Christ and the suffering he endured to set us free. So let's begin our worship with a famous Passion Tide hymn, There is a Green Hill Far Away. gospel that we're going to hear this morning, Jesus sets Lazarus free from the chains of death. But as he does so, he weeps. He weeps for those who cannot trust his power to save. At this really difficult and challenging time in our nation, sometimes we can find it hard to trust in Jesus's power to save, to trust that he is in charge of his world. So as we prepare ourselves to worship today, let's remember our sins, our lack of faith, our desperate need for forgiveness. And let's confess them to him in the sure hope of the new start we find in Jesus Christ. O oh God, you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you. Lord, have mercy. Let not the flood overwhelm me, nor the depths swallow me up. Let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Christ, have mercy. Hear me, O Lord, as your loving kindness is good. Turn to me as your compassion is great. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We're going to pray now the collect for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. God of compassion, whose son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, 
that in joy and in sorrow, we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we're going to turn now to the scriptures. The gospel we're going to listen to is from St John's Gospel, chapter 11. And it tells the, the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Now it's quite a long gospel, so as you listen, imagine you're there. Imagine you're in the village of Bethany, actually witnessing these events. Just place yourself in that scene. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with the two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was ill. The sisters sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, let us go to Judea. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathise with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of these who stand around me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When it said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff, and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews, who'd come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. When I was a small boy, I went through a phase of my life when I desperately wanted to be an escapologist. I used to spend ages watching these people on the television, these very kind of wiry men and women doing their turn, and it was extraordinary. They'd be completely chained up with steel chains, they'd be padlocked in, their mouths would be gagged, 
they'd be stuffed inside the sack with the top sealed, they'd be pushed over onto the floor, and then the clock would start ticking, tick, 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 tick. And all you'd see is lots of wiggling and squirming, and the clock was running down, and then with just a few seconds to go, could jump, they would appear all free and fine again. That looks easy, all that wiggling and squirming, I thought. I can do that. So one day I nicked the clothesline in our garden. I said to my sister, Sarah, can you tie me up? Well, unfortunately, my sister was a brownie at the time, and rather good with her knots. So she made a fabulous job of tying me up. And then she pushed me over and left me rolling around on the lawn and went off to watch the television. Two minutes went by, five minutes went by. It was nearly an hour before finally my mother came to rescue me. Another career option had gone from me. It's very easy to see that gospel that we've just listened to as almost like a kind of escapologist trick. Lazarus is bound up in grave clothes, he's shoved away inside this tomb, he's dead, but Jesus, like the wonder magician, magician sets him free. And how the crowds must have been absolutely astonished by what he did, how amazed they must have been. But don't forget, Jesus always wanted people to see through the sign. He wanted them to see through the outward miracle, to what was really going on, to the deeper message. And that deeper message was about who Jesus was and what he'd come to do. And a great way of reading through this sign is to reflect for a moment on the words that Jesus speaks into the tomb just at the moment as Lazarus is raised. Jesus says, unbind him, set him free. Unbind him, Jesus says. Lazarus, of course, is completely bound. He's bound, first of all, physically by grave clothes and by the stone rolled in front of a tomb. But his binding runs so much deeper than that. He's bound by death. He's bound by all those limitations and frustrations that come from being human, bound by mortality. And Jesus sets him free. Jesus unbinds him. And as he does so, Jesus is pointing us ahead. He's looking to the future, to what is just about to happen. You see, not long after this incident, Jesus himself will be bound. He'll be bound when his hands and feet are nailed to the cross. He'll be bound by death. He, like Lazarus, will be bound by grave clothes bound by the tomb and the stone rolled in front of it, Jesus is going to be bound. But of course, there simply is no force that can hold back the power of God in Jesus. And after three days, Jesus will unbind himself. He'll throw away those grave clothes. He'll walk out of that tomb gloriously, wonderfully, beautifully alive. Because Jesus is bound, he can unbind us. When Jesus was bound, he entered into our boundness. On the cross and in the grave, he was bound on our behalf. And as Jesus takes on our human boundness, so we, ordinary mortals, can share in his wonderful, glorious freedom. That's what we learn from Lazarus that Jesus sets us free. What about you? You see, Lazarus isn't just a figure from history. Every single one of us is Lazarus, because every single one of us is bound. So what's binding you as you worship this morning? Of course, we're all bound at the moment by the coronavirus, bound physically into our homes, unable to mix with the people we love, unable to worship with one another in our churches, bound also by the anxiety and the fear that this pandemic is bringing. We're probably also bound by other things. Maybe you feel bound by sin, by guilt, by the memories of things you've said and done that you know were wrong. Perhaps you feel bound by debt or poverty or injustice. Perhaps you feel bound by abuse or by the memories of abuse. Perhaps you feel bound by death and the fear of death. Every single one of us is bound. Every single one of us is Lazarus. And Jesus speaks over each one of us 
those same words. Unbind him. Unbind them. Unbind her. Set them free. Because in the boundness of Christ, in his cross, you and I can find freedom. In fact, that's the only place we ever will find freedom. In the cross, there's freedom from sin, freedom from death, freedom from injustice. In the cross, there's even freedom from this virus, because the freedom Jesus offers us by his dying is a profound freedom, one that not even suffering or fear or death can take away from us. So today, as Passion Time begins, hear Jesus speak to you as he spoke to Lazarus. Unbind him, unbind her, set them free. Let Jesus unbind you as you place your trust in him. And even in these difficult days, discover the freedom he offers us through the power of his cross. Amen. And so I'm going to say the words of the Apostles' Creed, a statement of our Christian faith, of our confidence in the Christ who unbinds us to the cross. Maybe you know these words, in which case join in, otherwise just feel free to listen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to turn now to God in prayer. If you'd like to join in with these prayers, then when I say the words by the Saviour's cross and passion, I'd like, you to, in, I'd like to invite you to respond by saying, Lord, save us and help us. Lord, save us and help us. Let us pray to the Father through his Son, who suffered on the cross for the world's redemption. Fill with your spirit Christ's broken body, the church. We pray for our own churches at this time when our buildings are locked down and we're unable to worship together, that we may feel a deeper communion with one another through prayer and through the study of scriptures. We pray for bishops, and for church leaders, especially for Julian, Bishop of our own diocese. Give to Christian people everywhere a deep longing to take up the, the cross and to understand his mysterious glory. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Father, look in your mercy upon the world you loved so much that you sent your Son to suffer and to die. We pray for the nations of the world, for those in positions of power and authority, and especially for all those struggling to contain the coronavirus pandemic. Pray for all those who have difficult decisions to make. Strengthen those who work to share the reconciliation won at such a cost upon the cross. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Father, bless those who are working under great strain and pressure at this time of global pandemic. We pray for healthcare professionals, for those who have set health policy, for those who supply our food and for all who seek to keep us safe, for those trying to shore up businesses and for those who've lost their jobs. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Bring healing by the wounds of Christ to all who are weighed down by pain and injustice. 
help the lonely and the betrayed, the suffering and the dying, to find strength in the companionship of Jesus and in his passion to know their salvation. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Finally, Father, welcome into paradise all who've left this world in your friendship. We remember before you especially those who have died of COVID-19 and their families and loved ones. Remember also all those whom we love but see no longer. According to your promises, bring them with all your saints to share in all the benefits of Christ's death and resurrection. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. And so we pray together, as Jesus himself taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for this short act of worship. I hope that those of you who would so much love to be in church today have found some consolation in being able to pray together. And I hope also, perhaps even more, that those of you who are watching who don't normally come to church or who are undecided about Jesus may have had some chance to think about the freedom he offers us through the power of the cross. Please be assured of my prayers for you and for your loved ones as we keep this passion tide season and then move into Holy Week and Easter. We're going to close now with a final blessing, then we'll end up with that great hymn, To God Be the Glory. So let's ask God now for his blessing. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.